Hi everyone, I hope you're okay and safe on these crazy times we are living in. First of all, I apologize for my English because it's not my mother language and I will probably pronounce weird words here and there sometimes. So yeah, sorry about it. For the sake of some presentations, just saying that I'm thinking on starting a series of videos with a format divided in, in two parts. One in which I share a quick tip or tool that I use on my day-to-day -day pipeline and the second one how I integrate that tool on my workflow. Sometimes I see pretty amazing tutorials from other people, great artists, but I would really like to see how they use that tool instead of only showing me the theory of that tool. And in that second part, I will try to be more personal, but not too personal, and just speak about the tutorial itself and the process. So on this first video, I'm going to share with you a basic tip about how I use the mirror modifier when I'm designing stuff like this tank, this spaceship, or basically anything that has some kind of symmetry. If you have been using Blender for a while, you probably already know that you can add symmetry with a mirror modifier, but you need to edit everything into the edit mode, otherwise you will be losing your axis all the time. And if you are trying to design in a quick way, that's something that you don't want to do. You don't want to be always between the edit mode and the object mode. What I like to do to avoid these kind of things is creating the cube as always, using the mirror modifier as always, but instead of using in a traditional way, I like to click in a tool inside the mirror modifier, which is called mirror object around here. You have the eyedropper and if you click in the object that you want as an axis, you have the mirror acting exactly the same, but without losing your origin point. That means you can be always doing stuff in the object mode and the edit mode itself without losing anything. Also, you can add a second mirror modifier, and the only thing that you need to have in mind is the order of the mirror modifiers. I find that this is super useful, not only because you need to see results in a quick way, but also because you have saved so many steps if you compare it with the traditional way of mirroring. I also believe that this is pretty cool, especially for animation or basically anything that uses some kind of symmetrical design. By the way, in the case that you use the hard top saturn like I do, you first need to select the object that you want to mirror, then you select the object that you want to act as an axis and press Alt X and pick the side that you want to mirror. I know that this is a really simple tip, but I personally didn't even realize that it existed after many months of using the software, and especially the fact that when you duplicate the objects, they still have the modifiers. So this is pretty nice for exploring shapes and placing stuff in a, in a rough way, and modeling and seeing if what you have designed you like it or not. You move through the axis, you move in the object mode, you scale, you rotate, whatever and then you can be trying stuff, which for a concept artist is the main thing for using 3D. So now let's go with the process of creating the whole spaceship, the interceptor one, using this method. Recently I realized that I had never made any project inspired directly on Star Wars. I felt so inspired with a talk that I watched from Doug Chang, that if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it to you. Uh, like I really enjoy it. Probably what I most liked was how he explained in which elements of reality they based their concepts. So I wanted to try to do a similar exercise in which I used a Group C racing car, an old one that I searched on Google and I liked it. And uh, I used it as a base shape for the reference for the whole interceptor design. I was designing for this directly on Blender, as you can see, with no previous sketch on this case, using the mirror the way that I just explained to you in the quick tip. After finishing the design, I created a couple of shots based on the frames uh, from the films themselves, and I got inspiration from pro artists like Andrew Walling, Steven Corman, Pablo Dominguez. I hope I didn't screw up the names. Uh, I'll give you the links uh, of those art stations on the, on the description of the video because I think that if you know, don't know the guys, you should stop this video and just go to the profiles. They are pretty awesome artists. Now I would like to throw a little bit of personal opinion about the whole use of 3D in concept design industry. 
while you watch the whole process with me. If you are someone that is thinking about the use of the 3D or any new tool, I, I will share with you my experience because I, I had my own trouble with it when I started. In my opinion, we are usually afraid of new tools and change means getting out of our comfort zone. Usually, unless we are trying for that, we don't want it. When I was super, super young and I started to draw, I saw on the internet how the people used digital tablets. I saved some money and I bought one. But when I went back home and I started to use it, it was a pain for me. So I stopped using it. And even though I knew about the benefits of Control c and not buying materials, etc., even knowing that, I stopped it because it was hard for me. I think that with 3D, it happened exactly the same to me like two years ago. I started it, it was super hard to learn for me, and I stopped it. In my mind, I was thinking that I needed to push my 2D skills instead, and 3D was just delaying me on that task. Also, not only that, but also, as a concept designer, you want many ideas in a short amount of time. And at the beginning of using 3D is exactly the opposite. It's long time, but a few ideas. And I think that that happened to our brain. Our brain feels uncomfortable doing something too new or too hard or whatever. And it tells you to, to stop doing it. However, when you get rid of all that and you are able to keep pushing it and keep pushing it, you see the benefits of the tool, which if you think about it, is exactly the reason of why you started to use that tool. I think my goal with these videos, or quick tips, is to help anyone who is feeling these kind of things when they are starting to use 3D, in this case Blender. Or maybe maybe you use it but you can't extract good things from, from whatever you are learning from the software and all these tips that I will be sharing are stuff that that supposed they click for me, like in a before and an after, and on the software itself. And I don't know, usually my friends and near people tell me that I should share this kind of knowledge by Gumroad or YouTube or whatever. And that's kind of why I started to, to do these videos, because I also like to share. I also like to, when, when I share something that helps people out, so hopefully that's what will happen here. And I don't know how many videos I will make, but I know that if I make them, they will have more or less this format. So I really hope you like it. And also thanks for watching them. <laughs> and yeah. So in order to speak about Blender itself a little bit, I have been using the software during the past two years almost, maybe one year and a half. I can't say for sure. But lately, I have been using it in a more hardcore way because I use it at work and at personal projects at home. I watch tutorials, so it's pretty present on my workflow right now. And I don't do it because I feel like it's the best software out there. Actually, I believe that the whole discussion about which software is better is pretty dumb. It's a little bit stupid because it's like a discussion about using watercolor or oil painting and uh, or what not or different types of oil painting and yeah this oil painting is better whatever is like who cares just paint and create a stuff i find that with the software is kind of the same it doesn't matter if one software is better than the other it, what, what matters is that you create a stuff and lucky for us we have a free software which is blender which is super strong to create the stuff and you can be creative. More people can be creative in a free way. And that's completely awesome for me. Well, we are reaching the ending of the video. And yeah, first of all, sorry because I didn't record everything. Otherwise, it would have been super long. Uh, but I will have that in mind. Also, I am not used to record my screen and the viewport is kind of crazy. I will have that in mind too in the future. And again, let me know if you like the format. And as I said, this will be more personal in a way. I feel like also it went a little bit random, but I am not sure. I like the more casual format. And at least for me, when, I, when I'm watching tutorials of people, I also like when they share a little bit of 
their thoughts and that kind of, that kind of things. But yeah, hopefully you find something on this that is helpful for you. And yeah, I hope you like it, that you are safe and you keep creating. Bye bye.